Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm chatting with David Ellsley from Cardiol Therapeutics. Cardiol is a clinical stage life sciences company developing innovative anti-inflammatory therapies for the treatment of heart disease. Their lead drug candidate, Cardiol RX, is a pharmaceutically produced oral cannabidiol formulation being investigated for its potential to treat inflammatory heart conditions, including acute myocarditis and recurrent pericarditis. In today's conversation, we'll be focusing on the recent results from the Phase two Archer trial, a study evaluating Cardiol RX in patients hospitalized with acute myocarditis. Myocarditis. These results are a major milestone for the company and could have important implications for future treatment options in this underserved patient population. We'll also touch on the Maverick trial, Cardiol's ongoing phase three study in recurrent pericarditis, which aims to address another serious heart condition characterized by painful and often debilitating flare-ups. Between these two programs, Cardiol is working at the forefront of cardiovascular medicine, targeting diseases where inflammation plays a key role and treatment options remain limited. With all that being said, let's dive into the discussion and hear directly from David about the company's progress, the clinical data, and what's next on the horizon. All right, everyone, enjoy the interview. David, it's good to see you again. Great to see you, Steve. Thank you. So I thought it'd be good uh, just because there's going to be people who are unfamiliar with Cardiol Therapeutics, maybe just to kind of frame the conversation for our audience. Let's just go over a high level overview of the company uh, for everybody to kind of understand what Cardiol is all about. Absolutely. So really high level. Uh, we're developing important medicines that target an underlying disease causing process in heart disease, which is called inflammation. I think Everyone has heard of inflammation before, but the challenge of inflammation is it can damage the heart and increase risk for death in heart failure, myocarditis, and really destroy quality of life in other conditions such as recurrent pericarditis, which is our lead pivotal phase three program that's underway now in the United States. So you guys recently announced a positive phase two Archer trial top line results. This was announced, I believe, just this week. Can you guys explain why these findings are important for patients? And uh, also, I have to say, it seemed like the the market didn't really react that that positively to the results. Uh, why do you think that is? Uh, that's really hard to understand, Steve, because uh, we couldn't be happier with these data. It said right in our press release that uh, we impacted uh, very near. Uh, we had a strong trend towards significance in our primary endpoint of extracellular volume. So that is a measure of swelling of heart cells and uh, essentially the space between heart cells. So we're measuring all of the edema and swelling tissue in the heart. And we had a marked impact on that. It did not reach statistical significance, but we have to remember this was a phase two trial. Phase two trials are designed to answer certain important questions, which is, safety is this therapy safe in these in these patients and more importantly in this trial is it should this therapy be advanced in development and categorically as said in those press releases from the world leading specialists in myocarditis there was a resounding agreement that this therapy needs to be developed and they were actually suggesting areas such as heart failure uh, immune checkpoint and inhibitor-induced myocarditis, which is lethal. Heart failure is one of the greatest medical challenges facing the modern era. It's an epidemic. It's caused by obesity, high blood pressure, and uh, diabetes. Uh, so it still has a 50% generalized mortality rate. So we could not be more excited uh, about this data that we've just announced. So how do the results support the clinical development of Cardiol RX and CRD38? Well, I think the most uh, striking, unexpected, and exciting finding from the trial, uh, which is uh, spoken about in our press release, is the is the impact or significant impact on reducing what's called LV mass. So we're actually making the heart smaller. So when a heart uh, is attacked by inflammation, in simplistic terms, the heart cells swell in the space between the heart cells starts to increase and the heart becomes larger. That's not good. And if that inflammation continues to attack those cells, eventually they become fibrotic. 
And so the heart starts to lose its elasticity. It can't function properly. We had a significant impact on LV mass. We have not provided the magnitude of that impact or any details or discussion concerning that because we want to preserve our rights to present the full data of Archer. And there's uh, a significant amount of more data to be presented in a scientific form where we can start to shape the conversation in cardiology because ultimately we would like this presented in a prestigious cardiology form to cardiologists for the benefit of patients so the therapy can properly be uh, described in the scientific and cardiology literature, which is ultimately what is going to help this therapy help patients. So my understanding is that the findings were consistent with the Maverick trial. Now, just for our audience to just kind of understand uh, a little bit more about what this drug does and specifically what the trial showed, can you maybe just kind of break that down for us in layman's terms? Sure. There's two programs at Cardiol. One is Maverick and one is Archer. So the data that is supportive in our press release of Maverick is what is exciting and interesting from Archer is the safety profile is entirely consistent with the safety profile observed in the Maverick phase two program. So Maverick is now a pivotal phase three trial. It is enrolling patients. It is a trial designed to support a new drug application of recurrent pericarditis, which is a miserable condition that attacks people in the prime of life causes shortness of breath, causes intractable chest pain. And these folks are typically in their prime, 45, 50 years of age, and they can suffer multiple bouts of this miserable chest pain. And in order to control it, they have to either go on powerful biologics, which are immune suppressing and can increase risk for infection, or they have to go on steroids if they don't respond to first line therapy. And those have significant toxicity. So my understanding is that you guys chose to wait to present the full Archer trial results at a scientific forum. Why did you guys choose to do that? Well, that's that's important for the development of a new medicine. The, the, the ambitious goals of cardio therapeutics is ultimately to improve quality of life for people suffering from life-threatening heart conditions. So one of the leading causes of death and disability in the Western or the developed world is heart failure. It's an epidemic. The leading cause of sudden cardiac death in young people under the age of 35 is myocarditis. You've probably heard of myocarditis because it's been described as a complication of mRNA vaccination. But the dangerous form of myocarditis is either viral induced or can also be caused by treatment with certain cancer drugs. And cancer drugs, these wonderful cancer drugs, they are curing cancers that 15 years ago uh, people were told to make plans. They, 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 these diseases were uh, lethal. But now these drugs are saving lives, but a percentage of those patients, a small percentage, but significant numbers, uh, probably 10,000 a year, are developing a dangerous form of myocarditis called immune checkpoint-induced myocarditis. What we showed in Archer was that we could reduce uh, the challenges of the immune or the inflammation mediated uh, impact on the heart, impact on heart cells. And most strikingly, we reduced what's called LV mass. And LV mass, an increase in LV mass is a powerful warning sign of the heart undergoing dangerous stress. It increases risk for death, it increases risk uh, for stroke, heart failure, and other serious life-threatening conditions. So we couldn't be happier by the fact, and more excited by the fact that we have this observation and we really want the opportunity to present it to the cardiology community in a peer-reviewed form, in a proper form. So ideally they can support the development of this medicine to, ask, to get to patients where it can do its most good. So I got to ask, I assume that you've chatted with some cardiologists uh, after the results from the Archer trials came out. Uh, what feedback have you received from uh, people like cardiologists? I think the reaction is exemplified by the quotes that were provided in our press release. So the cardiologists are uh, very enthusiastic about this data. They are can't wait to present it to their peers in a 
scientific form. But if you look at the quotes in the press release, uh, which they're saying the data is compelling and this support strongly supports, in fact, is what uh, the one cardiologist said, one of the top myocarditis heart failure specialists in the world, said it strongly supports advancing the development of this important medicine in areas such as heart failure and potentially life-threatening forms of myocarditis. So we, so that is the goal of the trial. The trial resoundingly met its goal. And now we are excited to take the next steps with this therapy beyond recurrent pericarditis. So we entered the Archer results with this phenomenal opportunity in recurrent pericarditis already running in a phase three trial, which is currently uh, addressable to a market that is 500 million and expected to grow to a billion for immune suppressing drugs alone. On the heels of Archer, we now have a clear pathway to accelerate our development in conditions as large and as dynamic as heart failure. And if you look at certain heart failure drugs, like the Blockbuster and Tresto, those drugs don't reduce LV mass in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, which still has an in-hospital mortality rate of 75%. So there's lots of room for improvement there. And now we have a strong signal that connects to that opportunity. And we look forward to discussing this with the pharmaceutical industry to partner for the development of the mass market of heart failure. So what can you tell me about the roadmap for clinical advancement and do the Archer results help support this uh, clinical advancement? Uh, most certainly do, because they, they, they most certainly support this clinical advancement because they, they provide additional proof of concept. So we have very exciting data preclinical that we have published in tier, high impact journals such as Journal of the American College of Cardiology. Now we have the same observations that are consistent with those observations preclinical in the human heart. And that's what's so exciting. So our primary focus at Cardiol, first and foremost, is our phase three pivotal registration trial in recurrent pericarditis, which is now enrolling patients in the United States. We look forward to large centers joining that trial from Europe in the near future and other prominent centers internationally. That's our primary focus. That's the fastest track to a potential new drug application because that is what that trial is ultimately designed to underpin. But now with these new Archer data, we have a very strong picture that we look forward to discussing in the right forms under non-disclosure agreements with prospective commercial development partners from the very well-capitalized pharmaceutical industry. And we believe these data, when fully presented in their comprehensive form, in peer-reviewed journals and peer-reviewed presentations will ultimately enlist the support of those partners to ultimately commercialize the full potential of our drugs in a disease as deadly and as impactful as heart failure that at any one time affects 6 million Americans, costs the U.S. healthcare system well over 30 billion annually, and is one of the most frequent causes of hospital admission. Now, you guys also added a new board member in Dr. Timothy Garnett, who, as I understand it, has a pretty impressive resume. What can you tell us about why he was added to the board and uh, what he brings to the company? Yes, we are very thrilled that uh, Dr. Garnett ag agreed to join our board as an independent director at our recent shareholders meeting, which took place at the end of May. Uh, Dr. Garnett is a, a very experienced uh, drug developer because he's the former Chief Medical Officer of Eli Lilly, the largest, or Lilly, the largest pharmaceutical company in the world today. And he held that position, I believe, from 2008 to 2021. Uh, so Dr. Gannab brings a tremendous amount of drug development experience, uh, metabolic syndrome expertise, and metabolic disease is really uh, one of the greatest medical challenges. So you think about diabetes, uh, that is the great challenge of the... Uh, current uh, areas of medicine because it is a key risk factor in uh, conditions as large and as troubling as heart failure. So David, last question for you. Over the next one to two years, what are the priorities for Cardiol? Sure. The, uh, the key priority where our, we're laser focused is the execution of the Maverick trial. So the Maverick trial is now enrolling. We couldn't be happier. 
about the progress we're making in that pivotal phase three trial, which is now enrolling patients in the United States with international centers soon to join, because that is a potential new therapeutic option for people who have their lives destroyed, uh, their quality of lives destroyed by this miserable condition that can impair their quality of life for as long as six years or longer. And they really only have immune suppressants or steroids when they don't respond to first line therapy. But in view of the Archer findings, we're also extremely excited now to meet with the leading minds in cardiac medicine, heart failure medicine, uh, inflammatory cardiac medicine to carve out the path for this much broader opportunity as a result of the Archer data. And this is going to include discussions with the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. All right. Well, David, thanks for hopping on. Congratulations on the results. And uh, let's uh, do this again as you continue to roll it on your strategy. That's great. Thanks for having me back, Steve. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this interview, do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe and ring that notification bell. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching.